is the month where wildflowers really start coming into bloom. But for me particularly, it's a month of white flowers. And, and over the past few years, I've been trying to learn a bit more about the weeds of the hedgerow that we normally kind of don't notice. And I thought that for the very first time, I'd make a little video to share my passion of weeds with other people. Surely everyone's favourite plant at this time of year is wild garlic um, because it just tastes fantastic and it's so beautiful. It's really easy to identify and um, it has these long straight leaves um, and the smell of garlic gives them away instantly. Um, and once it flowers it has these star-shaped clusters of white flowers in a little globe that stands up from the plant that's also very easy to, to spot. Just make sure you don't get it muddled up with Lily of the Valley, which we have uh, growing in our garden here, um, which has a similar leaf shape but is poisonous, um, or Dog's Mercury, which looks quite different but they do tend to grow um, in the same place. The absolutely quintessential sight of a British hedgerow in May for me is the kind of sprays of cow parsley that you can see everywhere. Cherville, um, an edible herb, so you could have a slightly wilder section of your garden and that the bees and butterflies and uh, insects can enjoy um, while enjoying this plant at home with, without the risk of muddling it up with um, hemlock and fool's parsley. One of my absolute favourites of all the spring greens um, is Jack by the Hedge with its really tall, straight stems that are really, really easy to identify. They have leaves which grow sort of separately one by one up the stalk um, with kind of jagged edges. But then they have this little cluster of white uh, four petaled flowers on the top. Um, it's sometimes called garlic mustard because supposedly your first taste is garlic and I find it takes a couple of seconds to kick in before you really, really get the garlic flavour. Um, and then it's supposed to have sort of an aftertaste of mustard, which I haven't noticed as much, but maybe I just need to eat more of it. Um, there's a mossy bank here covered in wild strawberries. They won't produce the big glossy red fruits that you're used to seeing on supermarket shelves, um, but some people might know the tiny little really, really sweet fruits that if you're lucky you'll find in one of these plants. If you've ever been on a walk in the British countryside, you've probably been stung at some point. But you might be surprised to learn that not all nettles sting. Um, nettles actually come in quite a variety of colours and shapes. And, and the white dead nettle is easy to spot everywhere in the springtime. It is actually edible, but if nothing else, it's quite fun to pick up a nettle and show people that it doesn't sting you, although if it goes wrong, it could be quite embarrassing. slightly sort of more thick set, a bit hairier <laughs> and larger than cow parsley and less delicate. It's also not very advisable to touch without gloves on as the sap from it can react with light on your skin and actually cause burns. However, quite bizarrely, it is actually an edible plant. Apparently it can be cooked like asparagus. I don't know how you prep it, but someone did once let me taste some and it was actually really nice, so it's something I must actually get around to trying. quite excited to come across this little patch of wood sorrel. Once you know what to look for, um, it's completely unmistakable really. It's got little sort of shamrock shaped leaves and little delicate five petaled white flowers. It is an edible plant. Um, it's got some kind of oxalic acid in it, which isn't good to eat in large quantities, um, but that gives it quite a sharp flavour anyway, so you're unlikely to want more than a few leaves on your salad. 
Thanks for joining me um, on my walk today. I hope you feel inspired to learn a little bit more about the weeds under your feet as you're walking this year. I am not an expert, so please do feel free to share with me any more that you know or let me know what you discover in your travels and also let me know if there's things that you would like to know more about that I might be able to share a video about, whether it's what books to use, what equipment to take um, and also if you are going to pick and eat anything please make sure that you have a trusty book with you and that you are 100% sure about what you're eating before you pick it um, and also share my video with other people if you enjoyed it.